Okay, so Zabbix 7.0 is not released yet, it's still in development, but some of the features are already available and you can download the alpha version and uh, play around with them. Today we're going to talk about a new feature, which is how you can push the metrics uh, to the Zabbix the values, I mean, using the Zabbix API. And if we would go to the Zabbix roadmap, this is where you can find it, zabbix.com slash roadmap. Uh, it's basically the first one, like enhanced uh, interoperability, push metric values using Zabbix API, and we can click on the feature request, which is actually about it. So support of history dot push API method. And um, it's already done. It's al already available in uh, the recent Zabbix 7, Zabbix 7 7.0 build. And we can go to the, to the documentation. So let's say here. So previously, the only way how you could send the data um, to some Zabbix uh, monitoring items uh, from third party tools or whatever basically was the Zabbix sender utility, which is part of the Zabbix, it's just a small component. And uh, let's say if you were using some Python scripts for integration, you could also um, use the functionality of the Zabbix sender uh, within the, the libraries of the Python, but it has a little bit of limitation because, okay, it, it might be fine with uh, with the scripts themselves. And, and I believe pretty often, uh, if you're using just, uh, just the Python scripts, you're still gonna use the Zabbix sender. But if we talk about some sort of uh, third-party utilities that could have some webhooks, usually you don't have a possibility to do some, some script execution or Zabbix sender or whatever. So with the webhooks, most likely you will have to use this new feature, which is uh, how you can use the Zabbix API to send the values uh, to your Zabbix server or the proxy. And we'll also do the example of uh, all the configuration and how it actually looks like. Um, basically, the only item types that are supporting this are the trapper items, which we previously used uh, for the Zabbix sender, and also HTTP agent, which can work as a data collector, so polling, uh, retrieving some, some values or data from some web pages, API endpoints or whatever. And it can also work as a trapper. So it can receive the data from your third party tools or scripts or whatever that are using the API to send it. Additional benefit of uh, this method is that it also goes in the audit log. So there's no audit uh, track if you use a Zabbix sender utility, but if you have some web hooks with this API method, you will have an API track, but probably enough of the theory. So let's try to configure this. And I, as usually have my Oracle Linux eight uh, with a Zabbix Docker, and we will be using Zabbix Docker to uh, deploy Zabbix, Zabbix 7.0. I'm not even sure what the latest uh, build version is. <clears throat> but basically what we have to do is go to our Docker repository and type Docker Compose minus F uh, Docker Compose V3 Alpen. I will use the Postgres latest and up minus D. So this will take only like a couple of seconds because uh, before making this video, I already tried everything out and uh, we can type Docker PS. Uh, there we go. We have a like, zoom out a bit. Uh, we have all the containers up and running. So we have a Postgres. Uh, we also have a MySQL for um, I'm not sure probably for the proxy uh, for the web and, and the server itself with the Postgres SQL support. Uh, right now we can basically go to the web and open IP address of my uh, virtual machine. And you can see that we have a Zabbix up and running with a version 7.0 alpha nine release. And the feature itself was already available in alpha four. So we can play around with it. And uh, to start, we will probably create a host. I already have my test test host. Uh, let's delete it. Um, we will not touch the Zabbix server, so we'll create a new and uh, let's call it, I don't know, YouTube. Uh, remember that whenever we are creating a host, it is a mandatory thing that we need to add it to some host groups. We have it. So we know that this API method is supported for the Zabbix trapper items and also HTTP agents. So let's try both of them. Um, go to your new host, do the items, click create item. 
uh, we will call this uh, test trapper choose the type which is Zavix trapper key is uh, a placeholder nothing new here like uh, anything that matches the syntax of the Zabbix key type of information of course depends on what exactly are you uh, planning to pass inside this item history trend storage I leave it up to you value mapping like allowed hosts uh, if you want to limit uh, some IP addresses who which actually will be able to send the values to this item then you place them here if you want to accept it from whatever IP address then you just leave it blank and uh, mostly that's it so we can click add we have this test trapper item and now let's try to understand how we can actually send the data to this item using an API. And uh, to find it out better, we need to go back to um, the feature request ticket, uh, Zabbix feature request 8541. And we need to go to the documentation of the trapper item, which in fact has an uh, example of uh, how you can send uh, API uh, the value through the API. It's down here. Uh, using the curl request. Of course, if you're using some uh, third party applications and webhooks, you will not have to use curl. But uh, for the sake of testing, uh, it's going to be fully enough to send it from the CLI of your Linux machine. So this is the syntax like curl, uh, request post. So this is nothing uh, API method specific. Then the URL, we need to point our curl request to API JSON RPC.php file of your Zabbix frontend. Uh, header, so we're using authorization using the session ID. Content type is JSON RPC and then just uh, the API method, which is history push and the required parameters. So what we see here is that we need a session ID and uh, we are getting a session ID every time when we log in uh, to our front end as example. And one way to find the sound would be to uh, just open our database, go to the sessions table and pick up any session ID that is being active right now. But we'll do it differently. Like uh, we can also use the login method uh, of the API. Let's say here, let's go API method reference. Uh, we need to find uh, user and uh, user login. And there you can also find examples how you need to log in. So the method is user.login. We need to provide the username, admin, and, and uh, the password. And as a response, we get a session ID. So we can do that from the front end. Uh, sorry, not from the front end, but uh, from, from the CLI. Uh, I've already have uh, prepared uh, two um, files shell scripts for for this task and uh, in the tmp i don't remember what is uh zoppy.sh so we have this example which is basically using the same syntax as we have in this example um this one it's basically what I did. I just copy pasted this and changed uh, the content of this example for the user login. Uh, going back, so we have URL. I am connecting to the local host, API JSON RPC.php. Uh, header remains the same all the time. And we are using the user login with the parameters username admin and password Zabbix, which are the default ones. Uh, this is enough. Uh, and uh, basically, I can just execute it. And in the response, I will receive an active session ID. There it is. So right now, I basically just, uh, I can copy it to some, some notepad or whatever. We will need it later. So the next thing, when we have a session ID, we are basically ready to send some data to our Zabbix Trapper item. So what you do is copy this and put it in some other file. Again, it's gonna be easier for you to uh, edit the contents. If you just copy paste it to, to the CLI, it will be more difficult. So I copy pasted it here and uh, here is our session ID. I will quit here and I will co copy my session ID that I just retrieved. Go to the header and uh, delete this one and paste the new one. Okay, uh, JSON RPC, uh, okay, history push, and then parameters, like we need to provide item ID, not the host, not the item key, as we might be used to with a Zabbix sender, we need item ID. And uh, I was a little bit confused because uh, I myself am used that, okay, the, usually the 
easiest way how you can get the item ID is go to the host, click on the configuration of the item, and then in the URL, in the previous versions, you always got like uh, item ID as a part of URL. Not here, because uh, right now we're getting the configuration of the items as a model window. So the best thing that we can do is go to the monitoring latest data. At least that's what I've found working for me. Uh, select our host. Um, sorry, not the host group, but uh, yeah, click on host group, Linux servers, YouTube host, click apply. There we have our item, test trapper, no values right now. Click on the graph and here in the link we have item ID. So we just copy paste it, go back to our file with the curl example change the item ID to which we want to send a value. And then it's pretty simple value equals one and clock like we can actually um, delete it, I will show it in the next example. So delete a clock clock and uh, so item ID there is value done, right quit. And let's try to execute it. Send a search and we see as a response success data is sent to our Zabbix and we can verify it by going to the front end and checking the data. Like we can go to the values. Here it is. Test trapper received a value one. And uh, where did I found that uh, clock parameter in the API example? I found it here in uh, API documentation. So basically, what we're doing is uh, history. Um, here, history push. And there are a couple of parameters that we can use. And one of them is also a clock. And a clock gives us a fantastic ability to, uh, let's say, I will go back here. And uh, Unix time. Let's say I want to send the value of uh, previous day. So today is uh, December 17. I want to send something for December 16. And to do that, again, I just edit my uh, request. After value one, let's change it to 12, whatever I put comma, and uh, clock. And then we need to copy paste the Unix time of uh, yesterday, not this one. There we go. Uh, paste it here, quotes, right quit. And let's try to send it again. Success. Let's go to the monitoring latest data. Click refresh. Um, ah, last one hour, it doesn't appear because I send it for the yesterday. So let's check last seven days. And there we go. We see the value of December 16, which gives you a possibility to send some older data that might be sitting on your third party applications or integrations or whatever. And uh, another option how you can send the values is in the array. So we are right now sending only one value, right? I uh, will edit this again. So we have a parameters item ID value clock. And uh, that's it. But we can also send multiple. And to do that, what we need to do is uh, put the brackets around, uh, then it gets most important thing to not mix up uh, with a syntax. Uh, it goes here. And it also goes here. And then let's check again example. Yes. And then uh, like this. So basically, we can go back here and put a comma. And then let's just copy paste this and paste it here. Item ID remains the same. Uh, let me change the value of 500. And uh, also for the sake of the testing, let's remove the clock of uh, both both requests. So value is here. And we're also deleting the, the clock of the first one. And of course, the comma as well. Um, like this. Yes. So let's try to send it. Let's uh, verify the front end before we do anything. So right now for the last 30 days, we have only two values. Let's try to send it. We made some sort of mistake in the syntax, which is probably the most common uh, thing that happens. 
Uh, well, yeah, I see the problem. <clears throat> we need the curly brackets here as well. Like this, and now, there we go. Data is sent, and we can verify it here. Click last seven days, we have two additional values of 512. That's pretty simple, and uh, it's actually very the same for the HTTP item. I will not spend much time on it. Like we have our test trapper, which is a Zabbix trapper type of the item. If you want to use a HTTP item, I will call it HTTP, change the type to HTTP agent. Again, whatever, call it HTTP, which is a placeholder. The only thing, like, even if we, uh, even if we know that we are only going to be trapping the values from some third-party systems, uh, we still need to enter the URL. It's kind of a mandatory thing. But then you need to leave this checkbox here, which says that okay, I'm in that enabling also the trapping, and provide some allowed hosts if there are any. So click Add. Right now we have another item and the only thing that we need to adjust in our curl request if we want to send the values to our HTTP item is the item ID. And where can we find item ID in the monitoring latest data um, HTTP item. Uh, let's click on the graph and the item ID is this one. So I can go to my curl request and just change item IDs like this. And uh, yeah, it's basically one one value change. And like this should be good. Uh, so let's check the graphs right now. Uh, let's check the graphs right now. Yep, we don't have any values at all. Right? It's it's empty. Then we execute the file and uh, we should get two values. Uh, last 30 days, last seven days. There we go. And we can see in the values here it is 512, just like it is in our, um, our shell file, 12 and 500. So that that would be it for how you can actually send it. And of course, like normally, when you're integrating Zabbix with some other tools, you will not use just a curl and a shell, you will use some uh, graphic user interface of the software that you're trying to integrate it, which will uh, request for some where you want to post what you want to post, then you specify this uh, history push method with all the required parameters and uh, everything should work uh, straight away. Uh, additional thing that I mentioned in the beginning, like the audit log, which is present for all HTTP requests, uh, sorry, all API requests. And um, we can just check them out, we can go to the reports, audit log, and there you can find what was happening, like we were using the history resource under the user admin, because I've previously remember the first operation when I did the user login, I used the admin and a password. So it is uh, admin user session ID token that I'm using IP address from which I am executing these requests. And uh, history failed zero history processed one. And here we have two. Uh, I couldn't find any explanation in the documentation what these actually mean, but it's pretty much self explanatory, like history failed zero, it means that um, I didn't fail to send uh, any values, because all of them were processed and succeeded. So a couple of times I executed uh, curl request with an array to send uh, two values and a couple of times I've executed it to send one value. We can go to the details and see also how much time it took uh, by the Zabbix server in this case to process this value. And of course, you can also use the Zabbix proxy as well to receive the, um, the data from the history push. So that's about it, the new feature of the Zabbix 7.0. Hope you like it and hope you will have some additional benefits to your monitored environment to use this new functionality. Goodbye.